What's up guys, Alina Popa and Whitney Jones here welcome you to a new edition of FemFlex Friday. This is our time guys to throw it back to a few years ago uh, when we had amazing champions on stage, right? In the meantime, they have retired, but we want to know what have they done with all this experience and all these years that they've been gone from the stage. And we have today Juliana Malacarne, four times Miss Physique Olympia and Natalia Mello, 2012 Miss Bikini Olympia. Ladies, welcome to our show. Hello, thank you so much for the invite. It was an honor whenever Winnie reached out and she invited me, I'm like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's nice to see you guys because we haven't, you know, seen you on stage in so many years, but having two Olympia champs, you guys are at the elite level and you've been exposed to the sport and had so many amazing years. We want to hear some of the best memories from that and how this sport has helped propel you into what you're doing now. And more importantly, what are you guys doing now? So Juliana, let's start with you first. It's been a few years now since you've been on stage. Give us a quick glimpse of what you're up to this day and age. First off, thank you so much for having me for this opportunity of uh, talk a little bit about me. It's very nice, I appreciate it. Um, I am enjoying my personal life. What I'm doing is since 2017, when I won my last Olympia and I decided to retire in 2018, I've been dedicated for my personal life, for my relationship. Uh, it's the first time actually, I'm actually living with my boyfriend and never lived with a boyfriend before. So uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's been a great experience and I'm, I'm really enjoying, I'm really enjoying. I dedicated so many years of my life to to the fitness career and i did that for about 20 years so i thought it was a little wow. time for me to dedicate to myself and that's what i've been doing for the last three years and it's been great 20 years that's yeah. a very long career <laughs> yeah Natalia. people don't know that but it's a long time <laughs> yes. yes it definitely is i know i've been uh, following your journey before as you are struggling to to fit in the uh figure division <laughs> exactly oh yeah there's, there's some tough years back then <laughs> natalia which year did you retire um so I, my last Olympia was 2013. My last show was 2014, the Arnold. Okay, so since 2014, uh, obviously the stage hasn't seen you, which is quite yeah. sad, I would say. Yeah. But um, <laughs> what made you uh, retire? What was the, why did you retire? That is so funny you asked that. And it's a great question because yesterday I actually made a post on my Instagram and somebody asked me the same thing. And the reason why I decided to retire was because whenever I got in, I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it is a very hard life. As you yeah. guys all know, it's very challenging. It takes a toll on your personal life, on your professional life. Like whenever you're in prep, you cannot do a lot of other things. You're in prep. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to be having fun and enjoying what you're doing in order for you to keep on doing. And I told myself that the moment I stopped having fun and I stopped enjoying what I was doing, I would walk away. And I still remember to this day, the 2014 um, Arnold, I woke up and I didn't have the butterflies. Mm. I just like I didn't have the butterflies. Whenever I got in the bus to go to the, the, the arena, the, the place where the show goes on, um, I just didn't have that fire in me. I could tell my stage presence was off because I wasn't having a good time. Then that's the moment I knew that I was done with the sport. Hmm. How about I you? I told myself I was gonna walk away the moment I stopped having fun. I stopped yeah. having fun and I walked away. That is quite interesting. Yeah, and Ted, to be able to pinpoint it to that exact moment mm -hmm. and actually act on it, that's yeah. pretty, that's I, it, surprising. And, and um, another thing also is um, I, I mean, I, for a long time being in the industry, I almost felt like I saw over and over again, people holding on to things that were already gone. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like uh, trying like, and, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have the perse uh, like perseverance and keep on trying. But one thing that I saw over and over again was people trying to hold on to something 
to hold on to a boat that had already sailed. Yeah. And neglect other aspects of their lives because they were trying to be what they were, but they were no longer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't want to be like that. So um, I was about to get married and I knew that I need I wanted my life to go a different direction. And that would probably make me more fulfilled. So um, that's what made me walk away. That's very interesting. Juliana, how about you? Why did you retire? Um, for me, it was a few factors. One of the factors was, like Natalia just said, I wasn't having fun anymore. Even I was on top of the game in winning. Um, I have lost a little bit of the, the, the interest for, I wasn't like fulfilling me as a person. And also financially was definitely not worth for me. I didn't have any sponsors. I wasn't really making any money. So um, I just decided and I met my boyfriend and he wasn't like a big fan of me competing. So I just decided it was a time for me to leave on top. I had won uh, four times. I didn't think it would make a difference if I had five or six or titles. Sure. And I just thought it was the right time for me. My body was tired because as I told you guys, I, I've been competing for 20 years pretty much mm-hmm. in a row. So I just felt it was a time and wasn't enjoyable, wasn't financially um, worth anymore. So um, I just decided it was time for me to dedicate to my personal life. And I have mm-hmm. absolutely no regrets that I made that decision, leaving on top. And see, I think that's a, a great position to be in. I, as a champ, I think you guys have a different experience where if you're just in the mix and you're constantly pushing, but you're still in the mix, I feel like it's a different situation compared to actually winning the title. Because as Natalia, you had right. mentioned, do you continue being one of those athletes that's chasing it where people go, oh gosh, I don't think this girl has anything else left in her life except this sport and they're just trying to right. stay relevant. Do you feel yeah. being the champ has kind of made you go, okay, I need to have that moment of I'm done, hanging it up and I'm out. And I feel exactly. like- And I feel like you can still be involved with a sport at a different capacity that is not just competing. Like um, after I I, I stopped competing and like towards the end of my career until I would say when I fell pregnant with my daughter, which was in 2017, I was doing, I've done seminars in over, in about 30 countries. Yeah. To talk about my experience, to talk about fitness, to talk about all the things. So um, I feel like people look at competing as the end all be all, and it is a, a great platform for you to um, get your name out there, and it's a good stepping stone. Yeah. But it isn't. Uh, you don't have to hold on to that in order for you to be successful in the industry. And Natalia, this was actually already tapped into my next question, which was how See? did, yes, <laughs> we're aligned. <laughs> how did the competing and the sport uh, interfere, you know, and helped you with your career? How did it um, influence your life after, right? Oh my and- God, substantially. <laughs> Substantially, um, it, it, basically, um, I always looked at it as a uh, a stepping stone, and I think that that's a mistake. I think I see a lot of people doing is like looking at competing as the business, mm-hmm. and competing isn't the business. Right. Competing is one of the marketing tools that you use for the business. Mm-hmm. The same way that the magazine cover it is in the business, even though if you don't get paid, it is a marketing tool that you're using for your business, business being you. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like that is where there is a little bit of misunderstanding when it comes to, to competing and, and how people look at the competition itself. Because you see a lot of people who might not have won the Olympia, but they have been incredibly successful just yeah. from being on stage and being able to create a personal brand. Yes. Absolutely. And in your case, Juliana, how did competing impacted your life and career after the competition uh, was over? Oh, it impacts my life amazing competing in general because the reason I came to the United States actually was 
because I want to compete and I want to, um, I want the, I'm doing this for a very long time. I'm doing this since 2000. So after I won the world championship in an amateur level, back in the day we had we had two federations, was a little different than it's now. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have uh, shows around the world. So I had to move to the United States and start competing. So the reason I'm here today, the reason where I am at now and everything was because the competition. And it has impacted my life tremendously. And um, I am very grateful for everything, for the, every opportunity that I have, the good ones, the bad ones, the ones I succeed, the ones I did not succeed, because made me the person I am today. And, um, and like Natalia said, this is just, you have to use this as a platform. You don't need mm -hmm. to be, um, you don't even need to be a champion, like, like, like she said. You just need to be smart and know how to market yourself and take advantage of the opportunities, the platform you have. And I've been doing it, and I, and I, been successful, and I'm very happy with everything. Juliana, tell us what you have been doing then recently. Like, what is it specifically? Are you doing training to help people get on stage, like you did? Um, what are you making appearances, doing seminars? What type of stuff are you into now? What I'm doing, I'm work more as just as a personal trainer right now mm -hmm. because. I'm really like, I'm dedicated to my life now. We just have a new house. So I'm, I'm like, I'm like doing more personal stuff, but I have my clients. I have my clientele that I have for all these years and I, I'm still working with them on one by one. I'm really not doing much coaching online or things like that because that was my option for the moment. Sure. But not that I don't have the opportunity to do. I have constantly people asking me. I'm just not work as much with that right now because I'm dedicating more to my like personal stuff. But the opportunity is always out there. I have a name made it and I know anytime I wanna really dedicate it to that, I would be, I know I have the opportunity to do it. That's amazing. We've got a lot more fun questions firing at you guys, but we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro 10. All right, we are back with the two Brazilian beauties. So if you didn't know, both of these champs are from Brazil, now living in the United States. So we are happy to have you here on our soil, even though we love Brazil. But we've got more <laughs> questions for you guys. Um, I want to start with you, Natalia. You had mentioned that when you're in prep and you're competing, there's so many things in your personal life that you have to just kind of push aside. So what are those things that once you hung up the heels, you were like, I can't wait to do X, Y, and Z because you didn't have time to before? Um, I think it was more to be able to, with a clear head, look at what I wanted to do when I grow up kind of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, because whenever you're, you're competing, it's like, I was doing seminars and I had a little bit of uh, like some clients, but I never had a very clear vision in which direction I wanted one to, my business to go, my personal brand to go. Um, and, and I think that taking that step away and seeing with more clarity what I wanted to do um, helped me shape where I am today from a business perspective, uh, which now because I work primarily with moms, also is a reflection of the direction that my personal life went after I stopped competing. I got married in 2015, the year after I stopped competing. And um, I had my son in 2016 and my daughter in 2017. So I just felt like I, I wanted to be in the fitness industry, but I didn't enjoy working with competitors. Sure. Yeah. I never coached any competitors. I have the utmost respect for coaches that work with competitors because we're freaking crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you guys putting up with my crazy ass whenever I was competing, God bless your soul. Um, so I did I don't think that I would have the patience and, and my, it wasn't my passion. So whenever I got pregnant, I was like, hold on a second, that's kind of what I want to do. Yeah. So the transition was almost like everything fell into place. 
So the answer is, what did you do? What is that that you do you couldn't do? I got pregnant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I made babies. Yes. <laughs> right. How about you, Juliana? Well, I'm trying to do that. It's yeah. been two years. <laughs> I haven't okay. succeeded yet. But uh, for me, it was just have the freedom, like like she said, you know, um, just having the freedom to do whatever I want and don't have that pressure, especially when you were like the best in the world, yeah. like four times in a row. It, it's like you just want to like you can like relax. You, yeah. you Even in your off season, you think about, oh, my God, uh, you know, I, I can't I can't just like do whatever I want. I need to keep focus, focused, focused. And mm. I did that for um, years and just having the freedom and, and I can do whatever I want or not do anything if I don't want to do anything. That was that was amazing for me. That was like what I, I really won. Won for less at least like a year, you know? And it's been three and it's been good and I have my I have my things going on, but um, that's what I want. I just wanna have some some freedom. Some freedom and not a responsibility and not pressure. Yes. And and just to add to what Juliana was saying, and just to be able to train for yourself, mm -hmm. yeah. to not train for what judges are looking on stage. And I understand that the judges have to look for something and I respect and it's amazing. But I just wanted to be able to lift heavy things, mm -hmm. which as a bikini competitor, sometimes you can't. Yeah. Natalia, Depending on the this level is a of great point, but Whitney knows nothing about it. <laughs> And I know everything about it, but in the opposite way. I'm tired of lifting heavy. I want to lift easy so I don't stress my joints so much and I don't take weeks for recovery. And I'm the opposite. I've broken every bone in my body and had 16 surgeries, so I can't lift heavy. Everything is light, light. Do what I, I can. Know, yeah. It was more to train for like the way I wanted to train, yeah, you know, yeah. like wake up one day and you're like, you know what? I want to try to hit a PR today, yeah. which like, yeah, I couldn't when I was competing because it could af affect my physique differently. Sure. How did your workouts change, Juliana? Oh, my workouts change. I don't need to train my upper body as hard as I had to do for physique. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy that because I still train. I still train five, six days a week. I still do my cardio, but I try to mold my body more the way I like mm -hmm. than the way the standards I need to do for the standards of the class. Sure. So what I like most that I don't have to train as hard my upper body. My lower body, as a good Brazilian, I it's always do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I will keep doing, but uh, what I like about it's like I don't have to train as hard or, or as intense as I used to sure. for my, my own health of my joints and my body. Another thing that I really find refreshing is that I don't have to eat so much anymore. Yeah. Like yes, all those right. meals in the off season. Yep. Natalia doesn't mm -hmm. agree. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't have to eat so little. Yes, <laughs> right. Yes, bikini right. is a whole new level. You guys, you guys have it rough. I would not survive. I don't think I'd be in this sport if I had to limit my calories because I'm not built like that. <laughs> Yeah, no, really I'm like, and it's funny because now I'll post videos of myself eating ice cream and drinking a glass of wine and I'm almost as lean as I was when I competed. And it's just like that mindset shift that has yeah. made a huge difference as well. Absolutely, I agree. So and also, there's got to be things that you think back to the day. I mean, we talk about it. I'm still active. Alina and I talk about all these different stories we have. So there have to be moments where you're like, gosh, I miss that. Or your heart just kind of, it, it has that pumping for something, that desire. What is it that each of you miss? Natalia, let's start with you. And I, I think that the missing, it's its kind of from competing mm -hmm. um, and also from what is happening with the world right now. Um, I loved traveling and the, the opportunities that I got from competing and from being a very yeah. active member of the fitness community um, allowed me to be in so many different places and, and see so many different cultures and like go to places that I never thought that I would be. And, uh, uh, and be able to speak about the culture of a place because I have been there and see the warmth of people. Um, so I definitely feel like that I miss that human interaction that I used to have traveling for to expos, to do seminars, to do appearances, to compete. 
Um, I mean, like I freaking competed in Australia. Like, how cool is that? You yeah. know what I mean? And and it's something that nobody can ever take away from me. Mm-hmm. Shit, I've done seminars in Siberia all the way. In, <laughs> wow. In Russia. Like, uh, Alina, wow. Uh, where are you from, Alina? Romania. You're from Romania. Yeah. Like I, I've done seminars all the way in Siberia, Russia. Wow. And it's like, it just absolutely blows my mind that I've had the opportunity to go to so many different places because of the platform that the fitness industry has provided me with. Amazing. Yeah. And Juliana, what about you? Well, I miss most, um, I love the opportunity of travel, but I really don't miss that. I still feel like I can do that, not for fitness or for for the bodybuilding career, but I still can do that. What I miss most is the discipline that I had with my diet, that I was really um, a sick person about, and now I really don't have that discipline anymore. <laughs> so that's what I miss most about it. You like, miss being I, regimented. I'm still healthy and I eat well and everything, but yeah. like I was like sick being you know i want to be like my <laughs> and you best miss that. <laughs> you were pretty much obs- obsessed with it but in order to be the first in the world yeah. i think exactly. that it needs you need to have that kind of approach to it right yeah correct yeah. correct i'm curious if you girls missed the attention that you had as competitors while you were on stage at your pick um i think everybody has an ego but i personally do not miss that. I personally, I'm totally fine being a quieter side. I'm an introvert. I'm not much of a of a, a extrovert person. So for me to step on stage and do everything I did, I have to be like a persona. Mm-hmm. So I really don't don't miss. I personally do not miss that. I'm totally fine being quiet and being who I am and enjoy my quiet life right now. How about you, Natalia? You missed the attention you got from the industry. No, because I think that it can give you a very false sense of security. Uh, and I see that very often with people uh, getting on their high horse whenever they get all their attention. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like back to reality. Hello, get back down to earth. So, and, and um, like the attention, yeah, it's great, but that was something that I always tried very actively. And my husband was a big part of that as well as a professional athlete himself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that he always helped me stay very grounded. So I never looked at um, at the attention at something that I was like, oh my God, I, I love this. Yeah, it, 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 I just looked at something that came with the territory, but it wasn't a big moving piece of the reason why I was doing what I was doing. I mean, if you're if you're that thirsty for attention, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. And uh, Whitney, uh, I love the way she mentioned that it's uh, it always gives you like a sense of security. Sure. Yeah. Right. It overcompensates almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm if yeah. that part of your life is uh, is lacking. Yeah. So maybe that's another answer to what you said before, when people don't know how to retire yes. or they, they stay past their time, right? Yeah. It's because they associate themselves mm-hmm. with that attention, which brings lost. them, you know, self-confidence and then they are lost, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they almost attach their worth as yes. a person to the attention that they are getting from the persona that they are on stage. And although it is the same person, they're two different lives. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and if you have nothing on the life as in like the personal life, then all your eggs are gonna be put on the stage life basket. Yeah, and that can be a bit of a, a, an imbalance. And, And I think that that's not what I wanted my life to become. We love these Maybe. insights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so these yeah. wise, wise insights from two champions like you. We're gonna take a little break right now and we're gonna come back with more fun questions for you ladies.
And we are back with Juliana Malacarne and Natalia Mello talking about what they've been doing since they retired. And talking about retirement, okay, we want to know, ladies, what would be your advice that you would give to athletes that perhaps started contemplated retirement? Natalia? Hmm. Oh, God. Uh, oof, that's a tough question. I think that when you, you know, you kind of know, um, make sure that you use the, the, the platform that you have right now um, from a competitor standpoint um, to, to kind of like nurture what you want to do next. Um, have like try to have somewhat of a clear vision of where you want to go. And it doesn't have to be a set stone as far as, especially if competing is your career. Yeah. Like if, uh, uh, because I know there are a lot of people that do it as a quote unquote side gig, but mm -hmm. if competing is your career and you want to make something out of it and it's it's going to be a business for you, try to have somewhat of a clear vi vision of who you want to serve, where you want to go. And that doesn't mean that it needs to be set in stone that you can never pivot a little bit from the direction in which you're going. But uh, uh, don't wait, That which I think that that's a mistake I made that when I was actively competing, um, I, I feel like I got too caught up in my own head and I didn't try to create a plan as to what is next, only when I was on my way out. So uh, um, even for the people who are not contemplating retirement right now, Mm. Try to create a personal brand for yourself. Be known for for something, um, and and I, I feel like a lot of times the direction that fitness is going for the younger generation, it can be very easy to fall in the trap of the the TNA tits and ass, mm -hmm. um, and that that can only get you so far. But if you don't have something else to bring to the table other than your tits and your ass, yeah. there isn't going to be much that you can be known and respected for. Yeah. So I, I think that trying to see beyond that and be a, a powerhouse as far as a brand, as far as a smart business person that has a clear path of where you're going would be my advice to anybody getting into the sport and leaving the sport. So it's pretty much before leaving the stage, plan your exit. Yes. In whatever yes. direction that would be. Strategic exit yeah, like strategy. because yeah. I feel like that that's what happens with a lot of people that that don't really plan their exit and yes. then they go back to quite a quote unquote real life and they're like, shit, what am I supposed to do yeah. now? Yep. And and whenever you kind of have that game plan drawn out, it makes the exit a lot easier and it doesn't give you the need to want to come back just to prove something that you don't need to prove. Definitely mentally it can be extremely hard if you don't have yeah. something to focus on, right? Yeah. How about you, Juliana? What would you advise? It was great which she just said. I definitely validate that. But also I don't, people can't be afraid of walk away from something because it's so much more to life than a diet, than step on stage, than make place well, than maybe win or maybe not. It's so much more to life. And well, sometimes you close the door, but another door will open much better ahead of you. So people can't be afraid or be so attached to one thing in life. It's so much more in life than just uh, compete. So uh, don't be afraid, go for it, follow your heart and be happy. That's why I tell people. And it's yeah. almost trying to find that balance with, I see so many athletes who they, it's all they're doing is this, is they're, all their eggs are in one basket. And if you don't have balance with anything yes. in life, then you're gonna feel mm -hmm. lost if that's ripped away from you from injury or you're, you know, you're like, all right, people are telling you, you gotta retire, <laughs> your time is right. up. But it's balancing it out. And this yes. is great coming from you guys who have been there, been at the top of your game, you're now enjoying and thriving post IFBB stage time. So this is great advice about balancing early so that you can set yourself up for success in the end. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, with your guys' years of experience, you know you had to have had some hilarious, funny moments on stage, maybe some flubs. So tap back into that brain from all those years of competing and we gotta hear, what are some of your funniest moments related to competing? 
Juliana, you go first. Ah. <laughs> I am trying to think. I really uh, you can't, can't be that perfect, guys. Myself. I would be in trouble. I don't know. I don't really? Think I had a fight am I the only fool? Because I have like eight hundred. Look at bloopers. what you're doing on stage. <laughs> I, I have, have to go there and fool. flex my biceps and do backflips and stuff. You have a lot more opportunities for funny stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, that could be an entire episode on itself. <laughs> oh, I don't. I have one actually that is off the stage. Okay, it's perfect. When, when I first got in the, the competition industry, Oh my God, I'm even embarrassed of saying this. I love it already. <laughs> <laughs> so I met the Nationals in Miami and they were, this was literally like a month after my first show. Oh, wow. And I'm like getting to know everybody. I wasn't very familiar with the industry, which I now looking back, I wish I had educated myself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm like with JM and JM introduces me to Jay Cutler. <laughs> then I look okay. at Jay. He had already won God knows how many Olympia, and I'm like shaking his hand, and I'm like, "So tell me more. Do you compete?" Oh my God, you that's did amazing. It. Yes. <laughs> yes, but okay. you know what? It's great advice for a lot of people who get into the sport, and I still coach athletes. Some of them have never even heard of Olympia, much less any of the athletes who've stepped on stage or won. It's actually good advice. Like no matter what you're getting into. Do some research, kind of learn about it so you can at least know who some of the key players are in case you get introduced to them or meet them. <laughs> oh, that was so... How I did he respond? He just, like, he laughed and nodded a little bit. He's like, yeah, I compete. And then I was telling <laughs> Isaac Hines, who is a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And then I told him, I'm like, I asked the guy if he, he's like, hold on a second. You asked Jay Cutler if he competes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was yeah. fun, you know, my, my moment. I love it. Hey, that's good. That's, and it's great advice because what you learned from it. So. Yeah, yeah. Juliana, do you have any? Um, I can't remember. In older day, and they uh, play a wrong song when I have to perform my routine and I have to improvise and try to, like, follow the... The beat, you know, followed the the music was completely different than what I was supposed to do, and I was freaking out my mind. But I think I did actually a very good job. No one realized because they don't know what you're going to present. So uh, amazing. Other than that, I don't remember any other episodes. But that that happens once and was really like frightening for me. But people still enjoy. Did they split? I did a couple of things there, but you know that that's what happens once to me. Any, wow. any wardrobe malfunctions there? Uh, um, no, never happened to me. Hmm. Everybody stayed in. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> stayed in. <laughs> I've had one. <laughs> yes. I've had all of the. I've had the music. Do you have a lip slip? No. You have a um, I grabbed it. I was doing my individual presentation, and my one of my straps broke. So I whipped around fast and threw my hair to cover the, the boob, and then just held it and walked off stage like with a little shimmy. And then oh, wow. one of the expediters, I'm like, I just need you to tie it up. I mean, I still to this day don't know who it was because I was still facing. And they just attached it, tied it to my suit. It didn't look pretty, but it stayed up. So I was happy. That's a nightmare. Wow. That, that's you always know, like my fear. <laughs> I actually have something that I wonder if it happens with you guys sometimes. And it cracks me up. Like um, I work out in a gym that is very bodybuilding driven here in Dallas, uh, the desti destination that is owned by Better Bodies. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes like I'll see a lot of the bikini girls, which kind of reminds me of my situation with Jay Cutler, that um, they'll be like, so do you compete? Yes. And then, and then I'm like, yeah, I did for a long time. And then like they kind of start to try to tell you how to get ready for a show. And I'm like, oh, girl, no, not today. Not today. <laughs> You're like, thank you. I appreciate the advice. I might try to step on stage again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this wow. happened to you guys, too? When people don't kind of realize that happened to me yeah. in the past it has local, happened. Yeah. local mm -hmm. shows where there's people that are family and friends supporting. They have no idea of the industry. They yeah. run into me and they're like, why aren't you on stage? Yeah. You know, and then uh, yeah. I'm like, this is a local yeah. show. But obviously I do not. Uh, I tell them that 
you know, I'm, I understand that they don't have the knowledge. I don't expect them to have the knowledge. They are just uh -huh. friends and supporters. Yeah. So I did tell them that my show is uh, in two months or something. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love it. I know. I think we've all had those experiences. We just kind of smile and nod. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Handle it as so best much. you can. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, in pre preparing to wrap up this uh, wonderful episode, ladies, thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, I, wanna, I want you to leave us with the most memorable uh, moment or experience that's in your mind, in your heart, from the times you were competing. Ooh. We're getting deep here, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that for me, it isn't so much a moment, um, but it's a, a combination of moments of all the times that I was prepping for a show. I mean, a lot of people don't know, but I bartended when I won the Olympia. I worked shifts five to six nights a week while wow. personal training, yeah. while getting ready for the Olympia. So there were a lot of times that I was on top of that treadmill, literally in tears. Um, and I think that the resilience and the discipline that I got from not giving up in the moments that I really wanted to walk away and just be like, screw this shit, um, has really made me, has really transferred to other aspects of my life and has made me a more resilient and disciplined person outside of the competition world yeah. in my business, in my family life and all of that because I had the opportunity to experience that and overcome that in my competitive life. Yeah, that's a beautiful answer. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> How about you, Juliana? What's your memorable moment? For well, the for days? me, um, I can relate it to what she said because I won my first two Olympias. I traveled by myself. I was my own coach. Oh, wow. I have no help. I travel by myself. I have to prepare my meals. Everything I did alone. I didn't have one person with me. Wow. So that's an, it's like something that people just see the beauty of it, but they don't know what goes behind closed doors and was really... Um, really really difficult and i did but for me the greatest moment of my career i would say was winning my first olympia mm -hmm. when i um, you know that was an incredible feeling i actually i wasn't the first woman's physique to won i took um i took seven in the first olympia for women's physique and then i um I beat the champion that was uh, Dana, yep. Dana Lynn Bailey, and that was the greatest moment of all my career. You, that, not you beating much, her, winning yes. the Olympia. You, know, you that was came just in amazing. and you, you set the And standards. I did everything in my own with absolutely zero help. I That's didn't have crazy. one family member. I didn't have anyone with me, just me, myself, and I. So that was the... That was an amazing uh, moment in my life. Wow, my what, a, what a great opportunity yeah. to actually look uh, into your lives and into who you are mm -hmm. and what the sport meant to you ladies. And I know that um, mm -hmm. when we compete, uh, many times because we have to be very close to our physical pain or mental stress or all of that um we focus we have the tendency to focus on that more but we must never forget the ones that compete and the ones that retire we must never forget that somewhere out there there are a lot of women that look at what we achieve they look at our bodies and they find it so inspirational and so motivational and i find that it's a blessing that we are in that position and then we can inspire other women yeah. to be better to feel better to work work more and achieve new goals. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here with us today and for being the champions that you are. Yeah. Thank you guys for being with us. Juliana Malacarne, Natalia Mello, Whitney Jones, and Alina Popa. See you next time. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.